today's topic is checking in on every one of you. So today's topic is the process of branding and marketing. And this is like very exciting for me as well, because in this digital marketing, a lot of, even a lot of um, vacancies here in Indonesia are looking for a lot of digital marketing because digital marketing uh, and branding is like so broad and you can apply uh, the knowledge of branding and marketing into all business actually um, whether it is online offline it's uh, quite necessary to uh, have a good knowledge of branding so today we are going to learn about the process of marketing and branding from one of uh, our partner from Galugotko, which is uh, Mbak Angela Amanda, if I'm not mistaken. Good morning, Angela. Hello, good morning. Good morning, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you too? Oh, thank you for asking. I'm great. I'm so excited for today's material. So I think because it's already 9.05, without further ado, I will give the floor to Mbak Angela to explain explain to us a little bit about uh, marketing and branding. Thank you, guys. Okay, good morning, everyone. I'm so grateful to be here. And thank you for joining this session. So first, let me share my deck. Yes. Okay. So the first one, I'm, I want to see some guys of you like there are Nankunda, who from Uganda, and then Mbak Bunga Purwita Sari. Hello, Mbak Bunga. How are you? Where do you come from? And then there are Mbak Helena Utami, Mbak Lohanda Yuhjuwaria, and then Iqbal Gosi, and yeah. Nice to meet you guys. Okay, so we're going to talk about marketing and branding one-on-one. -on -one. So it's kind of breakfast for me. And then we're going to have some three minutes of this breakfast. Oh, yeah. Let, first, let me introduce myself. So my name is Angela Amanda Milia Feria. That was my complete name, but you can call me Angela. I'm a growth marketing manager of Ngalup.co. And yeah, we're going to have this three minutes of breakfast. There are marketing versus branding. So we can know what is the difference between marketing and branding. And then the second is defining business goals and marketing goals. And the third one is to acknowledge what is brand guideline checklist and how to do that. Okay, so without further ado, let's jump into the first menu of this breakfast. Okay, so in your screen now, there are the difference between marketing and branding. And I got some three points to keep their difference. And I will ask you if there is anyone who could explain of what their um, acknowledge of this screen. So if you would mind any volunteers that you want to explain what is difference between marketing and branding before I cut the share it with you. Oke, okay. sepertinya masih malu-malu ya, Kak. <laughs> sepertinya begitu, Mbak Angela. Oke, okay, it's okay. It's, it's totally okay. So, let me share you about my perspective between marketing and branding. So, as you can see in here, marketing is some activities to get customer attention. It's only attention, while branding keep their attention. And then, it's drive to sales with marketing. And also in branding, it strives to recognition in recognition and loyalty. So recognition and loyalty will give some impact to your customer. So while the marketing just give uh, them to purchasing your product, branding give them recognition and loyalty. And if you ask me, what is the comfort to be um, apa ya namanya? Apa yang harus dipertaskan lebih dahulu? What is the uh, first thing you do is to having a branding. If to 
design your branding first because it's come first and then marketing which follow it to define your brand. So if you ask me, what is the definition in the elaborate sequence in the here you can see the marketing is the action to connect with your customer and get them to buy your product and service. While branding is about defining who you are as a company within your mission, your values, and make your special and unique. So anyone knows what is the difference between marketing and branding with their perspective? Anyone that has to volunteer in here? Okay, anyone, maybe Maimer or Nankunda? So what do you think about it? Okay, so maybe they're still very, very shy and it's early <laughs> in the morning yeah. in Africa. So, okay, maybe a little bit about it. So marketing is when you want the customers to know about you. And then after, after that, they kind of knows your values from branding. Is it what yeah, it yeah. is? Yeah. Yes, that's true. Okay, so... The biggest difference is where the marketing gets your attention and make them buy your product, while branding is what they remember as your brand. So if you ask me, how can we compile these two components to our activity of marketing and our activity to sell our product? And this is why you have to having a USB. USB is a unique selling point that is the differential factor that enables to distinguish your business with your other competition. And why you have to having this USB? Because it will identify what makes your business is the best choice and is the reason why your customer have to choose you over the competitors. So here's the way, how do you define your USB? I will ask you to there's three questions. All you have to do is your ask yourself within the three questions. The first one is to what is your feature highlight from your product? And then the second one is to what makes your product better than anyone any other competitor? And the third is your what is your product service impact on your customer? So when you have this three answer of your three question, you will have your USB in a basic way. So if you ask me, what is the example of a USB in a well-known brand. Yeah, you can see in here, there are McDonald's, Starbucks, iPhone, and Samsung. Well, the McDonald's have a cleanliness, low price, and consistency as their USB. And then Starbucks have a premium and personalized coffee. And then iPhone, they have a unique and stylish lifestyle, not a device, but a lifestyle. And in Samsung, they present a high quality, affordable price. So until here, can you define your USB, guys? If you still having a difficult to defining your USB, you can uh, make a step with a SWOT analysis to defining your strength, weakness, opportunities, and also the threats. So within the five or four the SWOT analysis, you can see where is the point of your feature highlight, what is your distinguish from your other competition, and so other else. And then. If you ask me why, why do we have to do this uh, USB defining? Because in this era, you are not the first inventor of your product. There are so many products that apa ya, yang sudah pernah ditemukan oleh berbagai orang-orang uh, di belahan bumi. Jika memang teman-teman belum uh, merasa punya kompetitor di negaranya sendiri, teman-teman mungkin akan punya kompetitor di belahan negara dunia lain. So basically it's like the product that you market usually are already found, already market in other part of the world in other countries. If you sell it the first time, if you market it the first time in your country, then maybe you will have a better chance to actually sell it in your country. But if there are other people also sell it in your country, then you need to find a USB to actually market your products, to make people buy it from you. Yeah. 
Okay, thank you for the translate. And if you ask me, what is the sustain uh, business come that it will make your business stay longer is when the, you can find what your customer demand or what your customer pain and you serve with your product as the gain of the pain. So basically it's the demand supply uh, economic waste, but this is the things that you have to remind that a sustainable business is which come from the customer pain and serve a product as their gain. So here we are moving into business goals and marketing goals. If you already have some USB, you can break them down in some business goals and also marketing goals. So business goals basically is our essential part of establishing priorities and setting your company up to success over this period of time, while marketing goals are specific objective, which describe in a marketing plan that helps to achieve your business goals. So these things of two with, uh, will having a pair for your business activity to achieve your goal as the successness. So this is how you define your business goal. All you need to do is to identify and ask yourself with your dream. And the first step is to identify what do you want with your business in some period of time as a goal. And then you can break down each goal into an actionable business objective and make sure that your objectives are measurable and tangible. And there and sign in goal related tasks to employ it. And then you can evaluate the progress regularly. So if you have any curiosity about uh, business and marketing goals, you can see over here, I give some three of business goals and marketing goals. You can read them um, upside down. The first one is the business which in a coffee shop. So they have a um, business goal which want to be a top of mind brand of our coffee shop. And the marketing goals is gain brand awareness by 10,000 customer of this year, let's say. And if uh, in the second business, let's say, they have uh, business goals for sold 500 business product in each month. And with the assumption of 50% downgrade, they have to get at least 100 leads for each month. So if you want a uh, business goals like, like uh, in the more complex, here we are. To get uh, 100 transactions in our app to earn 1 million profit in every quarter. So the marketing goals will be keep 5,000 uh, 5, user per month to buy a multiple products. So uh, I bet you can assume what is a business goals and a marketing goals in this example, because in the end, I will, I will let you uh, to define what is your business and marketing goals also. And yeah, here we are in the last section of our menu. So to having a, a success of marketing activity, you have to having an identity, which is brand. And I give you uh, some guidelines, so a basic guideline for the branding. There are six brand guidelines that you have to accomplish. The first one is brand story. And also the second is logo, color palette, typography, image guideline, and also the last is tone of voice. So this is uh, six of brand guideline, the basic yet you uh, uh, want to achieve as your identity. But the, the most important thing is a brand story because the other one is only the representative of your brand story. So either way to having a good a brand, you have to having a good a brand story that you can telling your customer uh, in a way to have a promo promotion marketing. And yeah, here is a sample of the brand cut line from Starbucks. Here you can see the overview as the brand story, the logo and the tagline, and also the appropriate way to set the logos and uh, yeah, other details of their brand guideline. And yeah, uh, from what I be scared for, I will let you define your business goal and marketing goals 
in the easiest way that you can uh, defining. And then I will ask you to find some reference for your brand cut line. Just a reference, not uh, you have to build in from zero on the first cards. You made uh, you can having a reference from any other browser. And if you couldn't uh, make some logo because it earns a uh, design skill, you might want to try a logo generator to uh, set some instant logo from your brand. And then you have a brand guideline in a complete way. So yeah, that was my end of uh, our breakfast. And if there are any questions that I can that I couldn't afford in the Q&A session, please reach out to me in my Instagram or my LinkedIn. Okay, let's discuss. Okay, so the task is to uh, define your business and marketing goal, and then you have to find some references for your brand through the uh, through like googling browsing right Ma Angela yes that's okay. right so please to all of the students uh you can do the task maybe there are some have you already screenshot the the task for today everyone maybe Maimur or uh Nankunda have you have you screenshot the task for today maybe <laughs> Yeah, that's the task for today. No, okay. Please take a sh screenshot right now. Take a screenshot right now. So this is all for the for the presentation for today, or do we still have other presentation, but Angela? Yeah, that's all. Okay, that's all for today. So please screenshot this. So today will be more focused on making the uh business and marketing goal and then the business and then the brand guideline right by angela yes. okay yes. so today will be more focused on creating your business and marketing goal and also defining your brand guidelines i know that this will take a lot of time so <laughs> this will take a lot of time especially brand story if i'm not mistaken by angela yeah yes, that's right yeah yeah, brand story will take a lot of um, a lot of efforts. Uh, I did it uh, with my team a couple of weeks ago, and it's just very exhausting because you have to do a lot of things. Uh, and uh, for all of you who didn't catch uh, what Amba Angela said, uh, she said uh, you should create one of the brand guidelines one of the part of the brand guidelines that you have to do is you have to create a logo or like typography there are uh, on the internet if you google or do uh, with other um, search engine you can search for uh, logo generators uh, free and then you can add free in it free logo generators and then you will find a lot of website that can actually give you uh, a lot of alternative by just telling uh, what kind of brand it is and then what kind of design do you want you want simple uh Okay, do you want it uh, as simple as possible, minimalistic? Do you want it a little bit retro? Uh, they will have a lot of different styles and then the AI will generate it for you. Maybe some of you don't know about that. So that's kind of a reference. And then you can also uh, search for kind of like um, for the typography, you can also search for uh, like a free, uh, free, Oh, what is it called? But you love font, yeah. Free yeah, font, font logo. Yeah, front logo, free font, and then you can put the uh, what is it called? Pair, yeah. Or you can search for a good pair of fonts. So maybe if you want to use more than one font for your brand, you can also get that for free on the internet. If you haven't, if you didn't know, so that's the tips. Okay. We can see in the chat box, Ma Angela, Mas Wahyudi said, maybe Gerald uh, Nanguda and Maimer want to tell us your product to Miss Angela for discussion. That's a good idea. Okay, the next one, uh, Nankunda said, he is developing a mobile application for guidance 
and counseling for universities in Uganda. This is great. Oh, wow. It's what, great. Do you think, what do you think about this, by Angela? Yeah, it's it's a helpful apps to connect us with our lecture life. Yeah, that is really nice. I think we have a little bit of similar one here in Indonesia, but it's for like for the master degree and uh, yeah, to study abroad. But this is actually very, really, very, very good. And then uh, for my mare, my product is poultry. Chicken. Poultry. Size. Wow. Okay. That's also very nice. Uh, for students to meet university counselors online. Okay. That's really cool. Unan Kunda. Okay. Uh, uh, your microphone is still off. Okay, sorry for that. <laughs> okay, maybe want to discuss it a little bit more about that or yeah, developing mobile application. Uh, is there anything that we should pay attention to, uh, especially for a mobile application, but Angela for the marketing itself? Okay, uh, nanti kalau untuk ditranslatekan. Kalau untuk di aplikasi, yang harus diperhatikan adalah yang pastinya adalah user transaction ataupun user activity dalamnya. Lalu yang kedua, memang uh, traffic per hari ataupun per month-nya untuk dilihat apakah memang ada penumbuhan aktivitas di sana. Kurang lebih seperti itu. Oke, okay. so itu dari segi tadi, berarti dari segi marketing ya Mbak ya? Kan tadi spesifik ya? Oke, ya? okay. so I... Ask her about what you should pay attention to in terms of the marketing goals. So we had both um, business goals and marketing goals today. And for the mobile application, uh, you should pay attention to the transaction or the activity inside your apps. So what is going on inside the apps? How many people are actually logging in and using your service? Um, and then the next thing is, what was the next thing again, by Angela? <laughs> the next thing is yeah, also the activity and the user acquisition too. Oh yeah, the user activity and the, what was that again? User acquisition. I'm oh sorry. yeah, user, user acquisition. So how many people actually creating new accounts, if I'm not yes. mistaken? Yeah, yes. There, uh, how many new accounts registered, how many are active inside the apps that the the stuff that you have to take a look at, maybe um, weekly, monthly, and quarterly, and then yearly. So you, you can create the report based on that. Um, and then poultry. I'm sorry, I didn't know what, I don't know what poultry is. Is this a like a farming? I don't know. I'm sorry. Pol poultry. Poultry meaning i don't know domestic call okay so it's like farming yeah it's farming yeah it's farming <laughs> yeah peternakan <laughs> so it's poultry uh okay what about farming so for uh mimers do you want to sell it directly to the to the customer or do you have any other idea about distribution or maybe do you want to brand it brand your business maybe we can also talk about that do you want to brand it do you want to sell it directly to the customers uh, or do you want to sell it to oh he wants to brand it oh is it he or she i'm sorry okay so mimer said I that mimer wanted to brand uh, his chicken poultry what do you think about this? Anything that uh, Mimer should pay attention to about this, particularly in the poultry? Oh, Free so it's kind of a frozen food, I thought. Yeah, so wanted to freeze them and then sell them. So do you mean this is like for exporting? Because back when I was in Japan, there are so many frozen chicken. Oh, so for exporting. 
Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, I saw a lot of this too uh, from Brazil. A lot of halal chicken from Brazil are exported. So yeah. What do you think about this? Um, freeze and then selling chicken to export them. Or not exporting yet, but soon. soon. Okay. So I think um, Myanmar should having a potential to um, untuk meng guide B2B business karena memang biasanya uh, industri peternakan ataupun frozen food dalam hal ini memang biasanya kan cara penjualannya dengan B2B marketing ya. Jadi yes. kalau sebisa mungkin apalagi bikin di ekspor tentunya pastinya harus menggait banyak partner yang membutuhkan uh, supply dari uh, chicken freezernya gitu. Oke, okay. so she said that you should pay attention to uh, B2B business. So business to business, you have to find other business abroad that uh, could be your potential customer because in this kind of industry, if it's exporting and importing uh, stuff, especially maybe like this, the, in this case, uh, a chicken, usually it is um, mostly business to business. So it's not directly. Maybe in this case, Uh, in my in my experience, when I was in Japan, it is particularly imported by a convenient, not a convenient store, uh, but a box store. So, like I said yesterday, like care for, care for, uh, like in maybe for example in America, there's um, Costco and Target. So, like a box store, they usually have that, um, and they import it themselves, not from other distributor. Oh yeah, you're selling in bulk restaurants. That's a good one. So maybe you can find other maybe chain outside your country if you want to start exporting. That's also a very good idea. So focus on looking for a lot of partners. Okay. Um, let's see. Maybe you can reach out restaurant for your market. How many restaurants do you know? Oh, he already sells in bulk restaurant. He or she, I'm sorry. Could you please confirm my member? Is it he or she? Okay, going back to Nankunda, we have I have already visited Makerere University Guidance and Counseling Department, and they have picked, okay, and they have picked interest in it. What can I include in my next presentation to keep their attention? This is really good. This is the first step. Okay, Mbak Angela, what do you okay. think? Okay, kalau untuk bisa uh, menggait attentionnya untuk bisa meyakinkan mereka gitu ya untuk to answer them uh, yang pertama berarti harus punya semacam customer journey yang jelas dalam penggunaan aplikasinya lalu yang kedua setelah customer journey jelas dalam aplikasinya kira-kira uh, pihak mana saja yang akan mendapatkan benefitnya dalam hal ini kan pasti dari pihak mahasiswa dan juga fakulti gitu ya tapi kira-kira kalau bisa disebutkan secara spesifik, apa saja sih benefitnya yang bisa didapatkan mereka in the specific way. Yang ketiga adalah kira-kira berapa sih cost yang harus dikeluarkan oleh uh, fakulti ketika nanti nangkunda untuk uh, mempitching atau mempresentasikan ke Makarya University itu sendiri. Karena memang biasanya orang agak concern di cost-nya atau di harganya. gitu. Jadi make sure bahwa cost dan juga benefit yang akan mereka dapatkan sebagai customer itu setimpa ataupun seimbang gitu sih. Oke, okay, so berarti cost maksudnya biaya produksi aplikasinya gitu kah Mbak? Atau bagaimana? Oh. Cost apa ini yang dimaksud atau Oke, okay. kalau cost yang dimaksud sebenarnya lebih ke kayak cost uh, pembelian pertama sih Kak. Jadi kayak apa ya semacam copyright atau akuisisi untuk aplikasi ini bisa dipakai oleh uh, universitas mereka, karena kan pasti ada semacam harga copyright-nya sendiri gitu. Nah, itu yang nanti pastinya agak mahal karena butuh legalitas dan sebagainya gitu. Oke, butuh legalitas juga ya. Berarti kayak, oke. Uh, oke, okay. okay, so the first thing that you need to do for Nankunda is that uh, she said the first And most important thing that you have to do is customer journey, a clear customer journey. I agree with this uh, with um, Mbak Angela because customer journey is uh, something that's very important. People will know exactly how they are going to get into the application, how they're going to use your service, 
or what kind of experience do they expect from you from your application and what comes after so that is the customer journey how they get in touch with your product with your application that's very important maybe for customer journey you can also look for the examples online there are i believe that there are a lot of examples online on creating customer journey and then the next thing that you have to consider is which parties benefit from it so uh, i don't know about this maybe like for example what is the benefit for the university what is the benefit for the faculty what is the benefit for the students and i think but angela you need to also think about what benefits to you yeah 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 what benefits <laughs> that's you the important part <laughs> that's the most important part you also have to think about uh, how it benefits you and so don't forget this is a business okay first of all this is a business you need to think about your profit as well right by angela yes <laughs> yeah you have to sure. think about your profit too so uh, how do you um, make your profit you you could also think about that uh, and then the next thing is a uh, cost uh, that you have to that the faculty or the institution have to pay up front because uh, you know it takes um some fees to do with uh, to do with the legal activities afterwards with the copywriting uh, copyrights uh that is also um something that you have to consider i think this is a good one so basically it included in your presentation uh one is the customer journey and the benefits for each parties each stakeholders in your customer journey um and then the cost the approximate cost maybe to do with the copyrights and the legal activities that you have to do afterwards. So three of those, my Angela said, that's the most important thing. Okay, yeah, that's very nice. I think uh, we have quite a similar, similar application here in Indonesia, maybe scooters. My Angela, tahu? do you know scooters in Indonesia? Oh. It's not, not the same, but it's similar in, in education. So maybe just I, I want to tell you a little bit about this. So in Scooters, used to be an application where you can uh, look for, it's just listing scholarships, listing scholarships and good universities that you can apply to. And then they become a consulting agent they become a consulting agent and now they also offer a lot of classes in like foreign languages to help you to study abroad and then they become now they're kind of like big consulting company for education uh, outside indonesia especially so yeah maybe you can look into that it's s c h o t e r s scooters yeah okay <laughs> okay the next one uh, oh, there's Tran in the audience already. Hi, Tran. How are you? Okay. Maymer, want to tell your product directly to Miss Angela? Okay. Maybe Maymer, can you please join the conversation? Hi, Maimer, how are you? Good morning, Ma. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, how are you? So could you, could you please elaborate uh, your business? Explain more about your business to Angela. This is so exciting, okay. Okay, my business is actually a poultry farm. Poultry means you rearing chicken from maybe day old chicken to table size. Then you, I personally, I have a, I have cage, a, a cage, a poultry that I constructed in my house. So I have a capacity of hundred beds at a time because I it's a small company. Then I have a refrigerator after this chicken are big enough for consumption. I freeze them. Can you hear me, ma? 
I freeze them and then sell it to my regular customers. Yes, yes, we're, we can hear you clearly. And then sell, sell it to my customers. Yes, I have a, a number of restaurants that order in bulk. Some buy 30 bets, 30 chickens at a time. Some buy, and then some in my people in my community they just buy one or two. But that's also okay because I get a little profit from that. So the, why I started this business was because um, around last two years in my country, the president stopped the importation of frozen chicken because Nigeria is one of those countries that import frozen chicken. So people didn't have chicken to eat because we weren't rearing chicken at all. We are just relying on imported chicken. So because of, I've learned a little about how to rear chickens from secondary school in agri So I started rearing these chickens at home because we have a large area. We have a large area in my house. So I started rearing the chicken. And then now at least I have I've, I'm now trying to brand the chicken. I mean, if I have a capacity that can produce large number of chicken, I think I'll start, I'll brand it and then start selling at a larger market, at larger scale. Thank you. Okay, that's very exciting. Uh, what do you think about this, uh, Angela? what kind of uh, baby stuff that she should prepare first for it? Anything special maybe for the brand story you want to highlight a little bit or maybe the other stuff? Okay, uh, if I'm not mistaken, tadi aku sempat dengar bahwa di negaranya memang tidak lagi uh, melakukan import untuk uh, konsumsi ayam begitu ya. Maka orang-orang di sana sebenarnya sangat ingin untuk mengonsumsi ayam okay. tapi sangat terbatas begitu ya kak. Nah berarti uh, satu brand story yang uh, bisa di. So... Hmm. Oke. Okay. I'm yeah. sorry. Oke okay, berarti uh, satu oh, brand story internet. yang bisa. Oke okay, sorry about my internet connection. Oh oke okay, oke. Okay. Ya yeah, berarti satu brand story yang bisa diangkat mungkin. Uh, berarti si Mimer ini bisa uh, memproduksi ayam yang lezat dan uh, bisa untuk apa ya istilahnya lebih tahan lama karena memang ada proses freezingnya dulu sehingga memang bisa dikonsumsi dalam waktu sekian hari gitu kalau saya nggak salah untuk menangkapnya please correct me if I'm wrong oke okay. okay, so <laughs> so Angela wanted to confirm did you did your Uh, government stop importing or is it still importing but it's still lack of supply in your country my government stopped importation of chicken they are not still importing frozen chicken into the country so they stop importing it correct? yes ma'am yes yeah okay so In this case, then Angela said that your brand story could be, uh, you know, highlighting that it is frozen and it can be eaten later on for like the expiry date is long. So you can eat it um, maybe, for example, a month after or two months after. It depends on actually it depends on the refrigerator also, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so um You can highlight that features that your your chicken, even though it takes uh, it it's been a long time, uh, for example, a month or two months, you can still uh, eat a good and tasty chicken after a long time because it's free. It's frozen. It's freezed, right? So maybe you can highlight that into your brand story. And maybe I don't know about this, but Angela, but what do you think about also highlighting it? Maybe if she wants to focus on the local market, she can also highlight that it's produced locally. Oh yeah, that's a nice idea because we also love mm -hmm. the we also love the empowering local brand or local market. Yes. Jadi kalau misalkan memang 
produksinya memang difokuskan untuk uh, lokal market, berarti akan sangat-sangat menyenangkan bagi dikonsumsi untuk mereka sendiri begitu kan. Jadinya uh, dia punya value dari uh, social atau dari lokal empowering-nya gitu. Okay, so here uh, my mayor, I think well, this is purely my opinion. I think it is also better if you highlight that you are made local. Your chicken is local. Everything is done with care and love. That's also something that is you can highlight in your proposal, in your presentation, if you want to make a brand for your chicken. Uh, because as Angela said, nowadays it is very, very, um, a lot of people supports the idea of local business. Everyone starting to go into the local um, business, small business, because one of the pandemic, right? Uh, the supply chain, global supply chain is chaos right now, is chaotic. And then the second one is because of the, uh, what is it called? Global warming. So because of that, if your supply chain goes longer and longer, then um, it will, the carbon emission will go higher. And it's not good if a consumer actually uh, use that product. So maybe that you want to put that into your uh, branding. So produced locally, you support local business, your business, and then it's good, uh, it tastes good because then you can deliver it faster, right? Because it's local. And then it is also a uh, very low carbon emission because it's not a global supply chain. It's all produced locally and it's good for the environment. You can highlight it because very, it is very, it's a booming business right now, if I'm not mistaken by Angela, right? To highlight those factors. Dan kalau boleh tambahkan juga karena uh, bisnis, rumahan yang memang punya claim homemade terus traditionally made itu pasti akan punya value lebih tinggi daripada uh, produksi-produksi yang memang lebih ke arah pabrik seperti itu. Ya, yeah, so Angela added that a lot of industry that puts homemade the label homemade or locally made um, or home industry it is more favored, people like it more than uh than the the products that is made on the factory right because people don't like something that is made out of factory sometimes it just tastes okay and it is not good for the environment also it has so the home industry your home industry is it has higher values than those who are made in the factory so you can put that into your branding also It has a higher value. Yeah, so empowering local business is very in right now, especially during the pandemic. Yeah, you can put that into your branding. Thank you, Ma. You're welcome. Okay. Maybe the other business, maybe Tran wanted to join in. We still have a couple of minutes before we go into the breakout room. Maybe Tran, hello Tran. Okay, maybe we take a look at the uh, at the chat box first. Chat, chat sorry, chat box first <laughs> before we uh, hear from Tran. Okay. Nice business idea, Maimer. You've good, you have good opportunity at this product. I also think it has a great potential. I'm sorry. And then the next thing is how the habit consumers there to consume chicken meat. Do you like it fresh, healthy, or cheap? Oh yeah, that's also some factors that you have to consider about your culture. What do people think? Maybe my mark can do a little bit of customer research and your target market. Maybe you can start with your local uh, people in your city in your uh, village. I don't know where you are, <laughs> where, where you're from. Uh, start from the local community and maybe you can hand out uh, some survey online to your friends, to people that you know. Again, we're going back to the other students. We have Tran, still no, still no um, 
reply from Tran. Hello, everybody. Oh, hi, Tran. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Okay. So, can you please tell us a little bit about your business? Okay. Um. Uh, yeah, it's just a uh, uh, idea, and uh, I image about um a um a, a, a online history platform. Uh, yeah, in uh where um the the st <coughs> student and teacher can uh connect um connect with each other and um share their no knowledge and uh more detail are uh, in uh, I'm yeah I am a start uh in this of uh there are so many are uh, inspiring lessons uh, yeah historic lessons and uh um, or maybe her uh, uh the the historic about uh, uh sorry uh games or um even uh um, uh, virtual museums for students can uh, <coughs> uh, to uh, and uh, besides um, there are uh, the uh, virtual rooms uh, for a historical teacher around my around my country uh, the uh, uh, <coughs> Arrive to the to our uh, discuss uh together and <clears throat> um yeah I I it, this is my mm, the dream business. Okay, so maybe I can confirm it for you a little bit. So it is uh, an idea of a history classroom online that there is a place there's a uh, a space for teacher and the student to share knowledge to have class and have a discussion together and then there's you are also planning to add a virtual museums is that correct yeah okay so you want to add virtual museums into your so this is an application oh yeah application yeah okay so this is an application you will have a place for classrooms and then virtual museums and then you will also uh make the teacher history teacher around your country to uh have a forum and have a class together inside your application is that correct yeah exactly Okay, that's a very fantastic idea. I remember, if I'm not mistaken, you are from Vietnam. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, and my friend, one of my friends went to Vietnam and she said that uh, the museums in Vietnam actually are very good preserved, uh, preserved really, really good. And they are all interesting, um, especially in, I forgot where she went. But the city where she went, it has so many museums, so many artifacts from the from the war. I think, if I'm mistaken, the Sino, uh, Sino, uh, sorry, in I Indochina, Indochina War. I don't know Indochina War. I don't know what's that in English. <laughs> Indochina, Perang Indochina. So I think it is very very interesting. What do you think about this, uh, Mbak Angela? Okay, it's a fantastic idea, I think, because nowadays millennials have to remain their story, also their country story, about yeah, because their history is the a step stone for the future, right? Jadi yeah. kalau misalkan uh, memang si Tran ini memang ingin memberikan suatu aplikasi di mana bisa mempertemukan guru, atau mungkin tidak hanya guru ya, tapi juga mungkin uh, veteran yang masih bisa oh. sharing Uh, tentang sejarahnya terdahulu, lalu juga mungkin uh, saksi mata-saksi mata yang sebenarnya tidak tertulis dalam catatan sejarah, tapi masih bisa berkomunikasi untuk sharing, pastinya akan lebih lebih apa ya, lebih menarik ya untuk dilihat karena sejarah yang menyenangkan itu menurut saya pribadi tidak yang tertulis di buku, 
tapi yang diceritakan dari orang-orang lain gitu di masa ke masa. Jadi uh, ini suatu penemuan yang menurut saya cukup menarik ya untuk bisa mengajak kaum muda khususnya untuk tertarik lagi nih sama sejarahnya, sejarah lokalnya terutama juga sejarah di Vietnam. Itu sih mungkin Kak. Oke, okay, so as Angela said that Tran this is a very very interesting idea, especially history is also it's very important as it is a step stone for the future. So it's something that we have to go through so that we make it right now. And maybe she said there's a suggestion that you can also add maybe sometime in the future after you add the history teacher, you can add uh, veterans and eyewitnesses uh, during the war, maybe like uh, the, uh, the veterans that, uh, yeah, in your country to, you know, tell their story inside your app so you kind of make a platform where they can communicate they can share their stories uh inside your application i think this is a really good suggestion by angela i also think about now i'm thinking about you know also adding archaeology maybe sometime yeah. in the future uh because like archaeology uh, really it goes hand in hand with the history uh yeah, and maybe obviously. Yeah, obviously, because, you know, they're the one who finds the materials. Uh, they kind of like goes in depth into all of the artifacts that they found. They obviously know a lot of things that we don't know, uh, especially my friends during uh, the university. When I was in the university, I had a friend and the archaeology is very, very interesting because sometimes the stuff that we know, very common, uh, in in the world of acad in the world of academic it's actually not exactly true for example uh, in indonesia there is a uh, an artifact that can prove that indonesia uh, has a writing language in like four in the 400s but actually the archaeologists found an older one but they cannot they still cannot decipher it So the official one is in the 400. So that's actually very, very interesting, right? Because yep. then if someone in the future can decipher who, who, whatever the content of that scripture is, the artifact, then Indonesia, the people of Indonesia didn't start writing in, at the 400s, but maybe older. So there's that. I think that is very, very interesting uh, product so what do you think if she wants to make this a uh, br doing the branding of the story do you want to highlight a little bit uh, is there anything that you suggest for the branding okay since this application is having a similar with that you know that is the apa namanya, um, platform yang bisa menghubungkan berbagai stakeholder dan juga praktisi untuk sharing dalam satu aplikasinya TED kan ya mbak ya bener that. nah Uh, jadi saya sih akan mensuggest uh, tren untuk me memakai TED sebagai benchmark utamanya, sebagai uh, mungkin dari segi UI UX-nya, terus juga dari segi um, customer journey, eh, customer journey uh, apa ya penggunaan atau ya user experience-nya, lalu juga um, kalau untuk highlight atau yang bisa diceritakan dalam brand-nya lebih kepada kayak Um, menyadari bahwa kurangnya uh, muda-mudi yang sekarang lebih condong ke hal-hal yang berbau modern dan melupakan sejarahnya maybe karena emang ya I bet itu yang terjadi juga di Vietnam jadi lebih ke masalah yang terjadi di di kalangan milenial sih yang untuk bisa memberikan mereka akses uh, pelajaran ataupun akses pengenalan sejarah secara lebih menarik dan lebih fun gitu ya melalui cerita secara audiovisual sehingga memang uh, sejarah yang uh, nanti diceritakan oleh masing-masing stakeholder yang berkaitan bisa lebih uh, dipahami dan juga dinikmati gitu. Oke, okay. so Tran, uh, Angela said that you, do you actually know uh, the application called TED? It actually very huge. It's kind of become like a networking uh, right now. It's kind of like a network of itself. You can find it on YouTube as well. Uh, there's also TED Talks, if I'm not mistaken, by Angela. 
there, there's TED Talks and TED Talks is held all around the world in a lot of universities as well, but they have an application that is heavily similar with your idea, uh, which is, uh, it's called TED, it's T-E-D, maybe you can find it on the App Store. Um, and then after you download it, you kind of see it, you need to take TED as your benchmark. So you want to you want to be at the same level at least uh, as per the UI, maybe the design of your application, the journey, how to use it. Uh, maybe the uh, try to make the customer as comfortable, as familiar as possible with your app, as in with the TAT application. I think that's uh, where you should start. That's what she said, and then. For the brand story itself, maybe you can build it with, you know, not a lot of young people know about the history, not a lot of people even know where to find, I think, but Angela, yeah, know where to find an authentic source of history. And let's let's be honest, going to the museum sometimes, it's not as exciting <laughs> because there is no guide. Sometimes, uh, you know, um, if you go to the museum, not a lot of people actually guide you to tell you the story, to tell you what does that mean, uh, where where this artifact gone, uh, what is the story. So it's getting very boring because you have to read a lot of stuff. Maybe like in modern museum, you have the audio. So it's quite helpful to have the audio. But uh, for reference, maybe here in Indonesia, one of the best museum is called uh, Ulan Sentalu Museum. Uh, do you know that, Angela? Have you been there? Here. <laughs> yeah, it's very good, right? Yeah. Very nice. Because uh, with the when you go to the museum, this is also can be your idea in the application is if you when you have the virtual museum is that there is a person. So when you go into the museum, it's limited only for 20 people if i'm not mistaken i think it's growing yeah so 20 people go inside with one tour guide and the one tour guide would tell you all of the stories inside the museum and the museum is kind of like a cottage so small buildings and you hop from one building to another so maybe you kind of you can make that into your virtual museums you will have your guides so it's not only the artifact and the uh and the um, description of the artifact uh you can also uh tell in your story it's about one uh, making young people know about their own history especially the local history which is rare and then the second one uh, angela said it is a way to know your country your identity uh to be in in a way that is interesting and fun so you create a fun ways to learn about where you come from where your ancestor come from and then you can expand it from there yeah I think that's a really, really good idea, Tran. Thank you very much for sharing. Okay. Now we have Danny in the audience. How, Danny? How are you? How are you doing, Danny? I think you, okay, you just join in. Let me first confirm fine. with the host. <laughs> yeah, I'm fine. I'm Danny. I'm fine. Okay. Hi, Danny. How are you? You're great. Okay. Thank you so much for being here. Wait a minute. I want to confirm something with the host. Okay. Thank you. For your patience everyone okay so danny okay maybe we'll let's take a look at the chat a little bit we have danny in the audience how to boost your branding and marketing maybe danny do you want to share your idea your business idea so that you can talk directly to angela yeah of course yeah okay please tell us about your business idea Okay, thank you. Uh, 
Are you look, are you looking here? Yeah, yeah. We can see you clearly, and we can hear you clearly too. It's great. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. Are you looking here? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so thank you, everyone. So I'm going to show you my yeah my business idea or my business. So my business idea, first of all, the business name is a Denny's Accidental Victim Commission. <clears throat> yeah, this is the business name, which is called uh, uh, <clears throat> Denny's Accidental Victim Commission. It is just like created it to, uh, to, <clears throat> to support the people who are, who has been the, the who have been the problem of uh, uh, accident, and also the key partner uh, are uh, lawyers. So because if you want to, <clears throat> if you want it to be uh, compassed by uh, accident uh, uh, or uh, accident victims, so it means that they they need uh, lawyers in order to in order to transfer their, their problem to the, to the justice. And also the key activities, uh, the key activities is seeking for accident, uh, accident victim who has been given, who haven't been given compensation for his or her accident if he or she has involved in an accident that has, uh, hasn't his or her fault in order to request for his or her compensation uh, through by using rules as their determines. I think that this, this key activity is very understandable because uh, <clears throat> if you are, uh, if you are, if you have been, if you have, if, if you have been involving in accidental but you didn't, you didn't give, you didn't give a compensation uh, from from your your accidental. It means that you are a victim. So that is the reason why you have to be given uh, uh, through by using rules as they are determined. So I can continue. Uh, <clears throat> uh, key resources. So key resources. First of all, as a accidental victim first of all you you must uh, you must give you must give me a, an accurate information from accident victim and also you have to give me a true evidence from a police institution and the hospital checking uh, and also a witness from where the accident occurred okay? you have to give the witness who know the way the accident occurred. Uh, and also as I continue, uh, <clears throat> the customer segment. So the customer segment, uh, it, is a, it is just like a, a, my customers. So my customers are accident victims. So, <clears throat> um, okay, I can continue. Uh, and also customer relationship, customer relationship, it is a communication with accident victim by using telephone or face to face, like to go to the field to meet with uh, with those uh, with those uh, uh, with those uh, accident victim in order to to to, to talk with he or her, with him or her. Then as then then after he start the journal to. To, to 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 flow their yeah their problem and also showing the compensation will be given by accident victim in order uh, for example the accident victim cannot believe you if you don't tell him or her uh, the benefit will be given by accident victim so that is the reason why we have to uh, to we have to to make customer relationship with them. And also, uh, as I continue, uh, cost structure through using, it means that uh, this business, so it, uh, this business, it requires to, 
uh, to use uh, broadcasting like social media, radio, television, public event, and other advertisement. For example, if you want to know those people who have that problem, so you have to, uh, you have to use social medias like Facebook to to post the to post the the to uh, to post some uh, to post your profile. For example, if you have the problem, if you if you are you are accident victim, you are accident victim, so you have to call us. Then we help you to 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 to, uh, to be uh, to to help you how you can get a compensation uh, for how you can give a compensation for your your accident your accident. So I think that. Uh, <clears throat> In order to get those accident victims, it requires a cost for advertisement. And also you can uh, advertise on uh, TV, you can also you can advertise on uh, uh, on, uh, <clears throat> on the radio and the public event. So those, those broadcasting, it requires cost for advertisement. So that is the reason why the cost structure it is just like using broadcasting. Uh, as I continue, the channel where I can, which way where I can, where I can go to, 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 to reach, to reach, to, to get those uh, customers. First of all, it is broadcasting, and also a communication method. For example, if you call the people who have the, that problem, so it means that it is just like a communication method. Any communication method can be used in order to, uh, it is just like can be used and also broadcasting to a uh, plus consumers. Consumers is just like accident victim. And also to uh, lawyers, as we know that so lawyers is very, very key partners in this business. So if you want to, if you, uh, for example, I'm not a lawyer, I'm a, I'm a businessman, but I will need the lawyers who will help me to, to be in charge to, to, to use the, law, the, the, the rules and regulation from laws as okay. well as, yeah. Okay. okay, so Danny, I think your uh, business idea is quite interesting. Uh, excuse me, where you are from again? I'm from Rwanda. Oh, from Rwanda, yes. Yeah. So your business idea is about uh, accidental victim commission support. So you support yeah, people that uh, don't get the compensation from a lot of accidents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so maybe uh, we will ask Mbak Angela what does she think about this business idea. Maybe is there anything that uh, Danny have to think about? uh in his proposals maybe for fundraising yeah okay thank you uh yeah. so this business okay. it, it okay. is just like okay uh here in rwanda so we uh i am a worker on one uh, this uh, this uh, someone who have this business but for me it is it is my it is business ideas i would like to share everyone if you want to to start that business, so it is easy to create that business. Okay. But, uh, but in but here in in here in Rwanda, so uh, so we have the company which is interested in this business. But uh, but I am I am a worker because I am a commissioner of of that company which is interested in the in that company. I I share you. Okay. Uh, but. Uh, yeah okay so maybe Ma angela can uh express her what does she think about this business idea Ma angela yeah okay thank you danny uh so i agree with uh aku setuju sama mbak kalau misalkan ini memang salah satu bisnis idea yang cukup menarik karena memang di ini sendiri aku belum pernah tahu ya kalau ada model bisnis seperti ini. Tapi seperti yang jelas LSM, ya. seperti LSM mungkin oh, ya. Beda. Jadi ya. 
Hmm, kalau LSM sepertinya belum tentu mengcover ya Mbak ya, karena kalau aku lihat memang si Dani ini emang kayak langsung mau ngasih semacam bukan insurance juga, tapi kayak langsung ngasih uh, cover untuk mereka yang mengalami kecelakaan, terus ya uh, apa namanya kayak directly gitu gitu, karena memang tidak tidak semua eksiden bisa di cover gitu kan, entah itu lewat LSM ataupun lewat asuransi gitu. Nah berarti uh, sebenarnya kan ini harus dilihat pakai uh, data dari kota ataupun lingkungannya sekitar gitu kan, kayak berapa banyak sih orang yang memang uh, mengalami permasalahan ini, berapa banyak orang yang uh, memerlukan bantuan dari uh, perusahaan ataupun uh, bisnis modelnya Dani untuk bisa diperluas ataupun diekspan. Dan yang ketiga, pastinya uh, mencari stakeholder ataupun tadi perusahaan yang memang sudah interest dengan ide dari Denny untuk uh, di apa ya, untuk bekerjasama lebih lanjut karena pastinya akan butuh butuh banyak uh, banyak kos juga ya kak untuk bisa uh, melancarkan misi ini gitu kalau menurut kakak sendiri gimana kak untuk bisa mungkin melengkapi juga oke okay. oh so the first thing that Angela said maybe I will interpret it for you first so Angela said that it needs, I agree with this. So if you want to build this business, then you need a lot of data. At least you can start with your city or the people around you. You can um, do some survey. You can take a look with uh, about how many people with the same problems, how many people that has the same problems that of course you can solve that you can solve that your business solve so how many you have to search for how many potential customers that you can get at least in your local area is this okay. whether it is in your city uh, or you if you're in living in a village then in a village wherever you come from you take the first yeah. step with uh, with your survey and then Uh, I, we also heard about uh, some companies that take interest maybe in your business, then maybe you can look for other stakeholders. So not one company, but you might may reach for the other com- company that can help your business. Because as we listen to your, to your uh, presentation, we know that this business model will take a lot of resources, okay. basically. Yeah, so you can... Uh, do that uh, with the stakeholders you can look for other alternatives other stakeholders other companies that willing to that are interested in your company and willing to invest willing to have a, some kind of cooperation with your company okay, okay. So maybe um, Angela maybe uh, what about the branding itself a brand story maybe what can you uh, at any advice on which want to highlight in Danny's business idea for the branding? Oke, okay. kalau untuk uh, brand story-nya, setelah tadi mendapatkan data dari banyaknya case yang terjadi dan tidak bisa di-afford oleh government ataupun oleh insurance yang ada di sana, berarti itu sudah menjadi satu pain point yang bisa dijelaskan nantinya bahwa keselamatan kita sebagai warga negara ataupun warga sipil begitu ya tidak 100% bisa dijamin oleh pemerintah ataupun oleh lembaga independen seperti insuransi ataupun kalau misalkan di sana ada bentuk LSM ya LSM mungkin juga bisa dan maka dari itu bisnis dari Deni ini lah yang akan menjawab ataupun akan mengamankan Uh, apa namanya segala sesuatu yang terjadi ketika nanti mengalami suatu kecelakaan ataupun apapun itu untuk bisa di cover secara total ataupun di cover secara lebih gitu dari apa yang bisa, bisa dilakukan oleh pemerintah mungkin itu sih kak kalau untuk brand story-nya ya oke okay. so because Danny because today's our topic is on branding and marketing goals so maybe uh, We can talk a little bit about your brand story that you can put in your presentations and your proposals. So the first thing is that you use the data that you already get from your survey. So you do the survey and you use that data in your brand story. Um, and then maybe you can say that if we cannot be safe, 
with the with the government with the with the help of the government and with the help of the insurance they cannot cover it if there is an accident then you can solve that is the pain point that your company can solve and then uh, if our safety you can say that if our safety cannot be guaranteed by the government by the insurance then maybe we can help you as a company we can help you and maybe i agree with angela's idea that uh, maybe you can also have a lot of cooperation with the ngo non-governmental organization in your in your country maybe you can uh, have contact with the local ngo uh, and also the international ngo uh, maybe under i don't know what what is the uh, the proper organization that you should contact from under the un for the multinational ngo maybe you can look at the the list of the ngo under the united nations that talks about victims maybe you can start on that first because sometimes um they can be very very helpful contact them through especially contact them through twitter uh through social media in twitter because usually they are fast response from twitter so i think that that's that's some of advice that we can give you thank you very much for uh joining us here danny okay, i hope the you. feedback helps yeah but uh, so but i would like to to add some some things uh so uh, in order to think this business because this business is very supported by government and also uh, this business it is just like easy business uh, it is not a, it is not a, it is not a complicated business so because if you want to to start that business uh, first of all, it is just like support in our in the, our community, and second, it is just like a, it is a just like a business because uh, if you because if you if you <clears throat> if you support uh, that uh, if you support those uh, uh, those uh, accident victim, you can they, they can be charged. I think thirty percent. It means that is it is a business, and also. Plus, uh, plus support from government, plus uh, NGO and, and and others. But the the main the, the main purpose for that business it is just like to uh, it is just because this business is not uh, is not very compet it is in, is not very competitive is not very competitive. It is just like uh, so. For example, here in my country. So we have uh, two companies uh, which which are interested in that business, but they are they are doing their business we uh, in the whole country of Rwanda. So it means that it is very impressive. And also, I would like to encourage my my fellow participant to uh, their country to engage in that business because is that business has a uh, has very benefit and profit. So thank you. Okay. Thank you for, yeah. Thank you. Thank for you my... very much, Danny, for sharing with us. So maybe as Danny said, uh, this is a profitable business. If you want to ask further about this uh, business model, maybe you can contact Danny. Is that okay, Danny? <laughs> okay. Okay. So other participants, if you are interested in this kind of business model, then you can uh, contact Danny. Okay, host, maybe I want to confirm a little bit with the host. Is the breakout room uh, ready? Okay, it is ready. Thank you very much. So I think because the discussion, the discussion was very, very interesting, but I think you want a deep conversation with your mentors. We are trying to give you the same mentors and uh, liaison officer in the room. We are trying to do that. And the host is already uh, preparing your breakout room. So have a great discussion with your mentors and I'll see you after the discussion.